When I first came up with the concept for Sodor's Finest, the intention was to put a spotlight on any Thomas character and just talk briefly about what makes them so memorable or significant. Their overall story, their character traits, important episodes in the series that they take the leads of. I already covered my two favorite characters in the series, and after the Edward one I was left kind of wondering where to go with this next. From what angle do I approach the next one? Since I didn't have a solid idea, I left Sodor's Finest alone for a little while, until I felt inspired to make another one. Now that I've had some time to mull over the concept, and produce three big videos explaining the three prominent timelines of the series, I decided why not take advantage of those, and have those timelines lay as the groundwork for Sodor's Finest moving forward. From this installment onwards, we'll be taking deep dives into character journeys across all three timelines, and then compare and contrast them all at the end. Sounds fun, right? I already covered Edward and Gordon, so I don't really want to talk about them again anytime soon. And Thomas, oh god, that is too big a beast to take on right now. So we'll do the next best in line. Henry, the Green Engine. Who is Henry? Henry is a big green tender engine. He was the third engine on the Northwestern Railway. He is one of the biggest engines on the railway, almost as big as Gordon. He can usually be seen hauling heavy goods trains across the island of Sodor to the mainland, including a special named fish train called the Flying Kipper. But he also pulls passengers, sometimes even the express. Henry is stuffy, grumpy, and often quite rude. But when he's alone, he really likes nature. He also screams a lot. I think Henry's the perfect candidate to kick off the new format for Sodor's Finest. Because unlike others we've already covered, Henry's history and character is very complex. So complex that only a thorough analyzation of it can get to the bottom of what he's really all about. You'll see what I mean as we dive in. Let's start with Henry's origins. Henry's backstory is one of the most complex and unfortunate of all the characters. To understand his origin, you have to understand the context of the illustrations in the first four books of the Railway series. When series creator Wilbert Audrey came up with the stories for the first of his books, The Three Railway Engines, he had three very different engines in mind. An older 440 called Edward, a relic of the past, a big strong modern 462 Pacific called Gordon, the most modern and high class railway traction at the time, and a 442 Atlantic called Henry, a more contemporary engine of the times. Three very different wheel arrangements, Henry clearly being the middle sized of the three. Audrey's reference drawings clearly depict Henry as an Atlantic with the 442 wheel arrangement. However, the first illustrator, William Middleton, did not translate the illustrations precisely as Audrey wanted, and depicted Henry as a 462 similar to Gordon in the final publication. Audrey was severely disappointed with the end results, not getting the Henry he had asked for. He was so upset with the drawings that the publishers, Edmund Ward, did not ask Middleton to return for the next book. The second book, Thomas the Tank Engine, was handed to illustrator Reginald Payne who approached the style very differently and delivered a fresh, realer take on the characters. The characters started to resemble real-life engines. Gordon officially became a Doncaster A1, and Thomas closely resembled a Brighton E2. Henry, however, again got the short end of the stick. Payne also did not illustrate Henry as the Atlantic that Audrey initially wanted. Instead, he drew him virtually identical to Gordon, rectangle buffers and all. Henry's only defining feature was, interestingly, a copper chimney cap, akin to those on Great Western engines. Two books in, and two different illustrators, and both times Henry was drawn incorrectly. Side note, but I find it so interesting that the general shapes of the first five characters that we know today were totally at the hands of Payne. Dalby gets a lot of lash for being inconsistent, but it was really Payne who mucked up the groundwork. Old Shape Henry would simply not be a thing if it weren't for Payne's mistakes here. Think about that. Despite this, Audrey was generally content with Payne's work, and allowed his proposed shapes of the engines to continue. 
However, confusion only persisted when Payne suffered mental health issues and was unable to return for the third book. The third illustrator, Clarence Dalby, was brought on, and he illustrated the third book, James the Red Engine, onwards. Some of Payne's traits were carried over, particularly noticeable on Henry, who maintained the rectangle buffers and copper chimney. Funnily enough, Dalby went back and re-illustrated the first two books in 1949 to be consistent in his style, removing those features from Henry, hilariously leaving this one blip of Henry with a copper cap and rectangle buffers in a single illustration in Tank Engine Thomas again. <laughs> Considering how anal Audrey was with consistency, I find it shocking he never had Dalby go back and fix this for later editions. In his re-illustrations of the three railway engines, however, Dalby incorrectly illustrated Henry as a 4-6-0. We're three for three now. Henry just couldn't catch a break, and these inconsistencies really bothered Audrey. Audrey admitted as much that he hated Henry. He hated that the illustrators couldn't get him right, and he wanted to write a story where Henry becomes ill and gets sent off from the railway never to return. This is why Henry is written as ill in Thomas the Tank Engine and Tank Engine Thomas again, FYI. It was Audrey cleverly laying the groundwork for Henry's eventual leave. However, kids frequently wrote in and asked Audrey to see more of Henry. Audrey later changed his mind and decided to work with the character to appease his readers. If he couldn't have the engine he wanted, then he was going to come up with a backstory to explain his awkward appearance. Cue the Island of Sodor book. It's deep lore time. This is Henry's official backstory. In 1919, a scandal occurred at Doncaster Works. A rival builder of Sir Nigel Gresley managed to send in a thief to snatch drawings of his proposed 462 Pacific. The thief, however, blundered and stole the wrong drawings. What he stole were drawings of a flawed design that Gresley had chucked. The builder had the locomotive built in secret, only to discover the mistake too late into the building process. The end result was Henry, a flawed Pacific with a tiny firebox squeezed between its rear drivers. The builder was glad to unload his whack engine onto the first desperate buyer, a buyer by the name of Sir Topham Hatt the First. Sir Topham Hatt, the director of the Northwestern Railway, was in desperate need of a big engine to run its new mainline. He was in search of an Atlantic, a Great Central Robinson Atlantic specifically, which of course is a fun in-joke to what Audrey originally wanted. Audrey, you sly dog, you. He got Henry for cheap, and was utterly disappointed and furious when he arrived. I wanted an Atlantic, he would fume, and that f***ing sent me that. The Island of Sodor book is just full of gems. Henry's small firebox made him a bad steamer and he was unable to perform to Hatt's needs. His poor performance led to the purchase of Gordon, who took over the Express. Henry was delegated to smaller stopping duties. His poor steaming was continually an issue, and sometimes he'd be so ill he couldn't work at all. And after the whole tunnel ordeal, it was pretty clear Sir Topham Hatt was completely over his new engine. This brings us to book six of the series, Henry's Spotlight Book, Henry the Green Engine. This is the moment where Audrey decided to work Henry into a character he could actually use instead of just writing him off. It's also worth noting this is the first book in which the engines have visible numbers, Henry with a number 3 on his tender. I like to think including Henry a part of the main lineup with his own number was Audrey's subtle way of showing Henry is here to stay. In this book, Hat decided to put an end to Henry's steaming troubles once and for all. He brought on special Welsh coal, which burned better and produced more steam. Henry finally worked properly, much to his and Hatt's delight. That winter, however, Henry was dispatched to pull a special non-stop fish train to Manchester called the Flying Kipper. En route, ice froze a set of points and sent Henry full speed into a siding where he collided head-on with a goods train. The damage was so dire that Hatt sent Henry off to crew to be completely rebuilt. Somehow, Henry returned the next year in a completely different shape. Hatt had sent a whack Gresley designed Pacific to crew and received back a Stanier designed Black 5. Audrey never went into detail about how this actually happened, but it's probably best not to ask questions. 
The main takeaway of the story was that Henry was a Black Five now, an actual engine that existed in real life that Audrey could use as reference for the illustrators. And by God, it worked, as Henry is probably the most consistently drawn character in the whole series following this. This was the real turning point in the books in my opinion, when Audrey really started making the universe work in real life. Every character introduced after this book is very clearly based on a real life engine, and real life events started to coincide with the stories, such as the Whiz Beach and Upwell Railway raiding its tram engines, the newly crowned Queen Elizabeth coming to visit, etc. In a delightfully twisted way, Henry not being realistic drove Audrey to want to make the series realistic which of course had a permanent, long-lasting effect on the series. We all love the fact that characters are all based on real engines, so we kind of have Henry to thank for that. So that is Henry's backstory. It's very convoluted and kind of questionable, but the main point to be made about it is that it is unfortunate, and by default makes Henry a rather sympathetic character. There's always that streak of sadness there with him. This is a good segue into the next part of the discussion, Henry's character. What is Henry's character in the books? In the books, I would describe Henry's personality as grumpy and standoffish. He is one of the titular big engines, and is just as grumpy and selfish as Gordon and James most of the time. He goes on strike with them when he doesn't want to shunt coaches. He stays in a tunnel when he doesn't want to get wet and tells his passengers to f*** off. He tells Percy to scram when he's in his shed. He thinks he's the only engine proper enough to pull the royal train. He bullied Duck, Donald, and Douglas when they all first arrived. He joins Gordon in making fun of Edward on multiple occasions. Despite the fact Edward was the only engine that was kind to him prior to and right after his rebuild, he believed he deserves two tenders like Scotsman. God, when I put it into words, Henry sounds more awful than Gordon, doesn't he? Very rarely does Henry's kind side ever come out. In fact, I think Gordon has more genuine moments of kindness than Henry does in Wilbert's books anyway. Henry and Gordon are usually depicted as always together in Wilbert's books. They continually seem to confide in each other. I find this dynamic rather interesting. Prior to his rebuild, Gordon seemed to only tolerate Henry and just treat him as an equal when he needed him to stand with him on something, like ganging up on James or when he led the strike. Following his rebuild and Henry proving to be a more capable engine, capable enough to pull the express, Gordon seemed to have gained a respect for him. Not right at first, of course. It was a gradual respect he gained. He grew to actually view him as an equal. The railway's two big engines have to stand together, after all. I like to think some of Gordon's jerk-headedness rubbed off on Henry. Henry really did seem to be at his worst whenever Gordon was around. I think his background story, combined with this standoffish rude behavior, can be summarized like this. Henry is a character with a very delicate self-image. Despite being a very capable engine now, his strifes in his past cause him to be very self-conscious of himself. He becomes very pompous and rude, really only in instances that his image is ridiculed. A tank engine lousing about in his big engine shed, being called old square wheels by the trucks. He's an engine deserving of two tenders because he wants to stand out. It's the equivalent of someone saying, I've had a hard life, so I deserve better than you. When you take his past into consideration, I suppose it's pretty understandable why Henry is so self-conscious. I'm not saying his behavior is justified or anything, and he always got his comeuppance whenever he acted like a jerk, but there is some precedent there, a deeper layer. In Chris's books, Henry remains basically unchanged. He's still just as rude and taunting as ever. One element I love that Chris played around with a lot was Henry's rivalry with James. Multiple times Henry and James lead stories where they face off with each other. Henry gets the last laugh in Cross Lions, James gets the last laugh in Fire Engine. They doublehead the Express together, James pulls the Kipper. I think it was a very appropriate choice to frequently pair the two characters that are super obsessed with self-image. Their obsessions are of course for different reasons. Henry's is more related to self-consciousness, and James's is just vanity, but the clash is brilliant. Lots of fun banter between these two in these stories. Wilbert's final Henry story was Super Rescue, which is undeniably epic. In this story, Henry rescues a broken down Diesel and his train, only for another Diesel to break down, and he has to rescue both at the same time. It's awesome, it's epic, and it's a true showcase of just how capable Henry is. This really was his swan song. 
Henry's journey started so rocky. So rocky in fact that Audrey actually considered writing him out. But he worked with Henry and eventually brought him to a point where he stars in probably the most beloved railway series story of all time. Henry starts out pathetic and weak and ends being the biggest Chad ever. It's so poetic, such justice for him. As the last Henry spotlight story in Wilbert's tenure, he really couldn't have ended it better. Henry's journey in the books is a perfect example of taking advantage of the limitations of real life to shape art. Audrey wouldn't have come up with the whole backstory for him if it weren't for the illustrators messing up in real life, and it kickstarted a character journey that started at the bottom and worked its way to the top. I find it so fascinating just thinking about how things would have been if Audrey had written Henry out as he intended. Henry would just be that weird engine that was around in the early days and then just disappeared from the series altogether. Just think about how that would have translated to the TV series. You think they would have brought him back like later on in like season 7 or something? I don't know. It's interesting to think about. I think I've spent enough time talking about the railway series story of Henry's character. Let's now take a look at how he fared on screen. Henry's journey in the original TV seasons follows his railway series one pretty closely at first. It's not as in-depth, the whole Gresley scandal is never mentioned of course, but the overall story is the same, just simplified. Henry arrived on Sodor as a rather pathetic engine. He was unable to steam properly, and this hindered his performance greatly. The Fat Controller tried out special Welsh coal for him, and he started to feel better. After he had his crash with the Flying Kipper, he was sent to crew and came back to Sodor with a new shape. Basically the same history. Henry's grumpy, self-important persona is also very present in the TV series. It's something that gets carried over later into non audrey seasons, especially season 5. Pah! You're late! Uh, that smell is making me ill! We engines run this island! Edward's going soft at the boiler. You're the only danger on the rails, Thomas. Now stop wasting time and get your cars hitched to my train! Stupid bird! I love season 5. <laughs> really? It's not super prominent in the later seasons. They got rid of it being his main personality trait and made Henry generally more nicer. But it did come out every now and then. I would describe Henry's personality in the show more as easily irritable, more so than a jerk, as per the books. The model seasons love to explore its characters and what makes them tick. Season 3 was the big game changer season in this sense. This was when they started writing original stories that weren't based on the source material, and it was in these episodes that different sides of the characters were explored. This is where James's pride of his red paint stemmed from, and Duck's fascination with the sea. The season 3 episode Henry's Forest showed us a gentler side of Henry that was never implied before. Henry is a nature lover. The forest on the main line is his favorite place in the world, and he feels very much at peace whenever he goes there. He loves the forest so much that he became utterly depressed when a storm swept through and devastated it. Audrey rather famously hated this episode. Now, what interest does a, lo a steam locomotive have in scenery? And I can understand why. Most of his grudges here came from the episode breaking real railway practice. And Henry is his character, after all, that he had a different vision for. But I respectfully disagree with him here. I absolutely love this element of Henry's character, because it showed that under that grumpy, self-important, big engine exterior is a very gentle, vulnerable giant who has an appreciation for the smaller things in life. Henry wasn't just another Gordon, he was far more complex than that. This wasn't a one-off thing either. The later seasons loved playing with the nature angle of Henry. In season 8 there's a story where Henry becomes fascinated with a wishing tree. In season 9, he does what he can to prevent a tree from being cut down. In season 12, he does, well, basically the same thing again. The later seasons also like to show Henry sometimes struggling, because struggling equals sympathetic, duh. His rebuild at crew helped him a lot, of course, but he was still imperfect. Season 7 showed a side of Henry when he was ill again, the first time since crew, and the others think he's faking it to get out of work. But even in that episode, Henry proved his capability and attempted to pull a heavy train despite his aches. What a chad. Later on, they also retconned his not needing special coal anymore, which is a change I do not like or understand. If we're going to get technical, it's actually a retcon that started in Magic Railroad. 
but we're not going to talk about that movie. <laughs> I think it was just the writers not knowing. Probably read that Henry needed special coal at one point, and just went with it without doing any further research. This is the focus of season 10's It's Good to Be Gordon. While I can't defend the Lazy Riders retcon here, I do really like this episode. It's a very good one for the hit era, despite that glaring inconsistency. Gordon and Henry's characters are both very strong here. Speaking of which, another thing the later model seasons loved to play with was Henry and Gordon's sibling rivalry, something that first dated back to the first season. In season 10, there are two episodes that focus on this. In one, Henry comes out on top, and in the other, Gordon does. I really wish that this dynamic was the focus of more episodes. Gordon and Henry are such a good duo together. I like that the later seasons showed Henry struggles sometimes. It showed he was still a character with faults even that late in the game. However, I am very glad it never became the status quo. Henry was never defined as being a pathetic engine. There was a lot more going on with him than that. And to give the later seasons some credit, they really did do a lot with him. From Gordon rivalry stories to nature episodes, Henry had a pretty good range. Shame the same can't be said about the CGI seasons. As you all know, I consider the CGI seasons of Thomas to be in its own canon separate from everything before it. Henry is just one of many, many factors that reinforce this for me. The way Henry is handled in CGI is, um, well, to put it bluntly, it's not Henry. Not the Henry we know. Of all the main characters, none of them have fallen farther from the source material than Henry did in these seasons. Let's dive in. Okay, so in terms of backstory, like many other characters, Henry's isn't really delved into in the CGI seasons. He does appear in The Adventure Begins, though, in which he appears in his new shape. He also appears in it in the flashback sequences in Blue Mountain Mystery. While this was probably just an error and the animators either forgot or didn't know to make an old model shape for Henry, this unfortunately solidifies that Henry likely arrived on Sodor in one shape and always stayed that way. From this, we can assume the Flying Kipper crash still probably happened, but the damage likely wasn't so dire that Henry had to be rebuilt because of it. Thomas and the Royal Engine states that Henry went to crew and was specifically repaired, not necessarily rebuilt. Perhaps this is crew, where Henry went to be repaired. So there you go. He did, however, still need special coal despite this. There is a whole episode that covers how badly he manages when he takes on regular coal. His need for special coal is fixed off screen later on, as told to us by Toby in King of the Railway. Don't tell me he needs special coal again. No, Gordon. That was fixed years ago. How this was fixed? It's never mentioned. In reality, we all know this was just Andrew Brenner taking a stab at the previous writers for being inconsistent. But in terms of how it actually works in this timeline, I have no idea. So, uh, off to a very shaky start here. Henry's backstory in CGI is, uh, it's a mess. However, that's not the most damning aspect of Henry in these seasons. His character was, and I am exaggerating a bit when I say this, completely slaughtered. The CGI seasons love to amp up Henry always being worried. He is a total hypochondriac, overly scared over everything. And I mean everything. I pinpoint the start of this flanderization in the season 14 episode, Henry's Health and Safety, where Henry becomes very weary of railway safety after he crashes into a wagon on the line. It's not taken to the extreme here like it is later on, but I do consider this the start. Since then, every time Henry is in the spotlight, the flanderization gets worse. The worst of this pre-Brenner was the episode Ho Ho Snowman, where Henry is shown to be afraid of a snowman. Ice to meet you! God, this episode sucks. The health and safety up is pretty bad too. I mean, don't get me wrong. But at least his fear is a bit justified in that one. In the snowman up, he's just scared because... Funny? I guess? Ugh. When Andrew Brenner and the new writing team stepped in, it seemed they wanted to fix Henry, among other characters. That special coal retcon in King of the Railway seemed to be their apology for how badly Henry had been treated recently. 
Henry's first spotlight episode under the new writers was season 17's Henry's Hero, which is an awesome episode, undeniably one of CGI Henry's bests. However, that hypochondriac side of Henry's character is still present here, when he gives up immediately when he finds out he took on Bad Cole. Personally, I'm happy to overlook this because 1. The episode is still really good, and 2. Considering Henry's history with Bad Cole, I don't think it was totally unreasonable of him not to want to take the chance. However, this fix didn't last long, because in the very next season, Henry is back to being portrayed as scared once again. It's not a fluke either, because there is not one, not two, not three, but several Henry episodes that use this trope. He's afraid of the flatbeds of fear. He's literally afraid of the rain. Chicken pox, the abominable snowman. What is it with Henry and snowmen? I don't even know where this hypochondriac persona really came from. He was never depicted as such in any of the eras before this. Percy was usually the scared one, not Henry. I guess I can kind of see where they were coming from with it though. If you take Henry's backstory into account, or the very first line of Sad Story of Henry 100% literally, then yeah, I can see why you'd think Henry would be so neurotic. And to be honest, I don't think I would have minded it all that much if it wasn't the main focus of his character. But to amp it up to such a scale is just baffling. My guess is they did this because they wanted him to have that singular, easily recognizable character trait to stand out from all the other main cast. He wasn't the only one to suffer from this either. The CGI series loved to flanderize its characters. Gordon became the always grumpy one, James was the always selfish and vain one, Percy was the baby, and Henry the worried one who is always screaming. <laughs> It's a shame, because this was really the only side of Henry they ever really stuck to. It's like they were afraid if they didn't make him scared all the time, people would think he's just a green Gordon. Never once did they ever surface his love for nature, ever. Wouldn't it have been nice to see a Henry's Forest-esque story in CGI? I guess slower stories like those are too boring, right? Henry's screaming is so much funnier. Season 20 appeared to be the season where they realized this wasn't working and tried to fix Henry again, this time for good. The episode Henry Gets the Express was a wonderful change of pace for a Henry Spotlight story, where they finally tapped into his capable side, showing him as an engine that very much can give Gordon a run for his money. This was such a good episode. The other Henry ep this season, Henry in the Dark, was also a nice change of pace showing Henry being the one getting his own back at the others for making fun of him. It really seemed like they were finally on track and starting to re-rail the character. But little did we know, this would be Henry's final Spotlight episode ever. The next year, the Big World Big Adventures changes happened, and as we all know, Henry was given the boot, along with Edward. In the season 22 episode, Forever and Ever, Henry proclaimed out of nowhere in a single line of dialogue that he wants to move to Vickerstown and will be leaving Tidmouth, aka the show. There was no build up to this, no foreshadowing, no mention prior. It happened on the spot and Henry just left the series. He was subsequently replaced with Rebecca. I've already talked about this in depth before, but the way this was handled was so rushed and poorly thought out. From what I understand, this apparently was not the plan to begin with. According to recent emails from producer Ian McHugh, the original idea was to only write Edward out and have him be replaced with Rebecca all in season 21. Henry was never meant to leave, at least not right away. But then season 21 was cut short to make way for the Bwaba movie, they hastily brought Nia into the fold, and needed Henry out to have space for both her and Rebecca. It's all so lousy. Just add another birth to the shed! Jesus Christ! After this, Henry was reduced to a minor character that only showed up a couple times a season, most times without dialogue. The Steamworks is pretty hot, sir. Quiet, Henry. This change was such a hard pill to swallow because he was always such a prominent figure. It especially hurt because it seemed like the writers had finally found their footing with him, only for him to be cast off right after. 
a bitter and unceremonious end to Henry's incredibly turbulent CGI journey. It never really felt like they gave him a fair chance to shine as a character. I don't like Henry's CGI characterization, but for what it's worth, I will say that it was at least pretty consistent. Henry was consistently shown as a hypochondriac throughout all 12 of the CGI seasons, at least the ones he was prominently in. So I guess if you view only the CGI seasons and take nothing else into account, Henry seems to never stray too far from what they establish up front. It's just hard as a fan to swallow this because that's never what he was about in any incarnation before this. Audrey hated when they made Henry merely like trees all the way back in season 3. Imagine what he'd think if he saw Henry screaming at a snowman. Henry has undoubtedly gone through a lot throughout the entirety of the series. From nearly getting written off by Audrey himself, to actually being written off, from Super Chad to Scared Virgin, from Selfish Jerk to Nature Lover, Henry has been on quite the journey in all three of these eras. If I had to choose one definitive version of Henry that I like the best, it'd have to be the Model series. Don't get me wrong, I adore his character journey in the Railway series. It's so well realized by Audrey, I love how poetic and imperfect it is. But I choose Model Series Henry because all the elements of his Railway Series persona are there, and they get carried over into the later non-Audrey seasons. I love Jerk Henry. Stupid bird! But the Model Seasons presented several new angles to Henry's character that make him so much more layered, notably his love for nature and that sibling rivalry with Gordon. All of these elements combined form one of the most layered, interesting, developed, and well-rounded characters the Thomas series has ever presented. This has been Henry the Green Engine. CGI Henry can suck a nut. Oh!